everybody. Welcome to Blockbusting, the podcast where we love to hate the movies. I'm your host, Jay Light. Joining me today, Allie Woods. Hi, Jay. Thanks for having me on. Looking forward of to course. hanging on some movies. This is, uh, this is very exciting. My second Ed- uh, Edinburgh Fringe international guest. Wow. This is very fun. That's, uh, I don't often get called international, especially in Scotland, <laughs> as a ginger. But... Uh, <laughs> But thank you very much. I'm happy, I'm happy I can bring that to you today. Yeah, I'm man. happy I can, ch- I can change, your, your, change your, it up a bit. Your first one you said was Daniel Muggleton from Australia, literally yeah. the other side of the world. Right. And here I am, local boy for Scotland. <laughs> yeah, I got to get someone to reps home. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. 100%. But you might need to change the color filters on your camera to get my paleness in there. But that'll be Yeah, right. we'll have to adjust the white balance. We'll figure <laughs> yeah. out how to color yeah. correct it, right? Yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a tricky sentence saying, let's adjust the white balance, isn't it? That's uh, <laughs> You have to specifically talk talking about footage and cameras right yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah don't let anyone cut that out of context of this podcast jay <laughs> of course not listen i keep a i keep a very strong hand over all of my editing yeah i won't allow anyone else to to mess with my white balance <laughs> uh well this is uh speaking of movie terms and controversial opinions you got a real this is a real interesting pick you came in with today yeah you don't you want to talk about hating toy story 4 mm. what who hurt you this is <laughs> This is all, this is all, Jay, contextual, right? Okay. You gotta understand. So I'm 25, I was born in 1993. Toy Story 1 came out in 1995. Yes. Yes. So it was my first movie I ever saw in okay. cinema. That was the first one. Wow. And, um, I was known when I was growing up, I don't know if you read Roald Dahl, Charlie and Chocolate Factory, but I was known as Mike TV growing okay. up. Because I sit in front of the box, just watch it. All day long. Did you do the Mike TV like whole get up to where you're no, wearing no, cowboy no, stuff? No. I was an organized. He was a severely organized kid. Very creative child. Oh, he yeah. probably works in TV now, I'm sure. <laughs> they all had a go at him then, but he's probably the executive. Um, I didn't do that. I just used to sit there in whatever I was wearing and watch TV all the time. So when I went to the cinema, right, mm-hmm. it clearly blew my little mind. Right. Because suddenly... How big is this TV, man? Like, I was like, to my parents, like wow, this is amazing. This is crazy. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I was like, why don't we get one of these? You oh, know, it's gigantic. Let's bring one home. So, exactly, precisely, right? So, I loved watching it. I love watching Toy Story. It was my first film ever. It was one of those, I, parents always talk about taking their kids to the film for the first time or early times, and it's all chaos and shouting, toilet breaks and all that. Apparently, I was just sitting there. I mean, I don't remember, but I was just sitting there, like glued, like eyes wide. Like, uh-huh. I didn't blink for two hours sort of thing. Um, and then they let, took me and I couldn't understand why it stopped and uh, <laughs> my mom was telling me she was dragging me out and I was like almost like like a scene out of sort of a, a NARM movie where like they were trying to take me home and I was sort of didn't understand and I was like lost my mind and I was like reaching out to the screen being like Buzz Buzz <laughs> as like a two and a half year old Buzz <laughs> And that was my first movie experience. I always feel like Toy Story has an, has an intrinsic link with me. Right. That and and I understand that as well. I'm I'm uh, I I was born in 1990. Mm. Toy Story was also one of the first movies that I saw. I don't I don't remember the actual first movie I saw in a in a in a proper mm. yeah. cinema. I, I don't remember. I only know because my but parents you know, they, told me. Yeah, you got yeah. you had that imprinted in yeah, your brain. Yeah, yeah. But that's the thing. I remember it, it, it's, it's a franchise we grew up with literally. Mm. So it's it was interesting to hear that. Uh, we have very different takes on Toy Story 4. Yeah, yeah. So, so g- going on. So, yeah. So, it's all about, I mean, people who are listening to this for sure know Toy Story, but it's all about the young guy and his toys and mm-hmm. his toys relationship with him growing up. Toy Story 2, fantastic film. I think that might have been the first film I ever got on VHS. Maybe. I okay. need to clarify that. But that, I mean, it was a great film as well. I loved it. Oh, yeah. Was that 2002, that one? Something, yeah, I yeah, think, I think it sounds like about that. right. It's about nine years later, and it's sort of feeling like, oh, this is this is, this is is the franchise for me. Mm-hmm. I remember Toy Story 3 coming out. I was excited. Right. And obviously, when the franchise gets to the third film, yes. often it's starting to lag. Even The Godfather, 
starting to like, right? Right. I have still have not seen The Godfather 3 because I've heard yeah, I'd say how abso- bad it yeah, is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that is absolutely, absolutely fine. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I remember reading the reviews for Toy Story 3 and I'm just seeing five stars. I'm seeing four stars. And I'm just reading about how emotional it is. And at 16, when you're 16, right? Right. You're emotional as a guy as well when you're told not to be emotional. Is it, you're emotional, but of you're course. trying to keep everything on the surface. You're trying to be cool. 16-year-old. Mm-hmm. Keep it keep it hidden. I don't, you know, or whatever, whatever. Films, whatever, mate. I don't, right. I don't care. You can't you let know? that affect you. Yeah, toys. I don't play with toys anymore. <laughs> Man, <laughs> art? Yeah. Nah. nah th- th- things people work tirelessly for my enjoyment. Nah, I don't want to see that, mate. <laughs> That's a waste of time. <laughs> Thing I used to love as a kid, but I don't think that's cool anymore. Yeah, exactly, no way. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Fundamental part of my formative years. Screw you, man. <laughs> so I remember thinking, right, I'm getting excited for this film though. Mm-hmm. And going to it and thinking like Yeah, hopefully it's funny or something. Right. Um just I think it's a masterpiece, right? I yeah. think it's just wonderful. I think it's hilarious. I think People, I mean, if you haven't seen this, spoilers. But the scene at the end where they're going down to their their doom. Yes, in the in the uh, the yeah. furnace is about to happen, and they all grab their hands. Yeah, and that for me is such an original, masterful part piece of storytelling because this is a world where toys come to life. It's all animated, it's glitzy. You know, these films are like U's and PGs and stuff like that. I don't know what they do call it in America, uh, but the sort of PG, yeah, okay. For, per, for for scenes of peril. That's, yeah, yeah. They have to always classify why it's a PG yeah. instead of a G. Right. Because that was, I think Toy Story 3 was the first one that was PG instead of G because they're like, uh-oh, they have to, we have, we're, we're grappling with the concept of death here. We yeah. need, we need some parental explanation for this. But that, but they were, that's and so much early because yeah. you're expecting, and Woody reacts like he's expecting like, come on guys, we're going to get out of this mm-hmm. eventually. And you know, they do, because right. it's that sort of film, but but it's that it's that moment of sincerity where those characters reach out for each other's hands and think well look I shouldn't we be just glad that we've got each other and mm-hmm. you know, if we're going into the abyss I wouldn't want to do it with anyone else right and I've I lost my mind <laughs> oh god playing my heartstrings so for me when we get to 2010 that is a perfect trilogy mm-hmm. also it feels like I've grown up with it because Andy gets out, and Andy's well. How, what, what age do you go to college in America? Because he's going to uh, college in the film. Is it 18? eighteen? So yeah. Eighteen. So he's a couple of years older, but it feels like the same. I'm sixteen. He's eighteen. Right. I feel like I feel like these are my toys. I used to have a Woody toy. I used to have a Buzz toy. Oh, look at yeah, that! Yeah, hundred percent. And then I was just like, this is this is. I can't believe this this <laughs> franchise has given me so much. Like this is. I was so grateful. I was like, unbelievable time I've had in the cinema and watching these films and I got Toy Story 3 on Blu-ray back when that was a thing before we just had magical films on all yeah, our devices just pull it all streaming yeah, digital yeah. so then a couple of years later and it transpires as a Toy Story 4 now right right obviously the press releases come out that all the actors I didn't want to do this but then I saw the script and I couldn't say no yeah, all the all the normal trash that that the actors all the stuff press, you say, press yeah. machine get taught you know it's like oh it's a completely different story it's a different characters it's with the girl now I've forgotten her name but it's with her and her toys and things oh yeah, um, yeah I heard her, she's not even really that important she's not and she I never really feel that oh, we'll get into the actual details we'll of the film yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> But already, already I'm like, already I'm like, okay, this is not what I want to hear. I'm talking to my friends who've okay. suddenly grown up, and they're like, oh, can you believe it? And it for me is just a, a, a signpost that this is this is the the network or the executives or whatever you want to call it. Right. The, the, somebody's the very well media trained. Somebody's gonna. Somebody in Hollywood was like, all right, yeah, yeah. this is gonna happen. Yeah. We're gonna make this another Disney classic. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, let's this franchise will never stop. Let's get to you know, to- Toy Story Six, First Blood, or whatever. Uh, you know? So, <laughs> <laughs> Toy Story Seven, the final nightmare. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. They died finally do a crossover with Chucky and uh, Charles play. Toy Story Ten, where they go into space and somebody's Buzz smashes somebody's after they've frozen themselves in liquid nitrogen. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's I'm sure that's been mooted in a in a sort of in a in a, in a discussion, but um. And you know, so I'm, I'm anyway, I'm keen to, so I watch the trailers, mm-hmm. obviously I'm keen to keep up with it. I, um, see the reviews, they put Jamie positive. Mm-hmm. Okay. Go see the film. I liked it. Okay. Good film. Yeah. It's a good film. Yeah. And that's all it is. Oh. 
And for me, it's ruined that perfection that I had of that trilogy. Now it's that extra one. It's that additional leg to my tricycle. Uh huh. Yeah. I don't want that wheel. I don't want to make it a car. I like the kids' tricycle, man. <laughs> Leave me alone. Yeah. You didn't and get into this to get a car. I, no, exactly. <laughs> I, I don't. I don't want it. I, I thought the film was good. I liked it. It was. It's also a weird film, right? It's also for me a strange film tonally. Mm-hmm. Because I appreciate it's quite a clever film. It's quite an interesting film. Yeah. For the others, it was sort of a clear narrative of like, uh, everything's happy and something happens and then it's about resolving that. And, you know, I think with this one, it's not clear because it's sort of unhappy at the start where he's not being played with. Right. And then she, and then he sort of gets happiness from helping her out, but then she's unhappy at nursery. Uh, but then he solves that. But then his whole thing is keeping this spork. I mean, wonderfully um, done by John Mulaney. I think I think he's a funny, funny character. Yeah, it was um, uh, very good. Oh no, Tony Hale was Tony the Hale, voice. My apologies, yes, my apologies. Um, John Mulaney is the fork, though. That would have been great. I oh, think that what been a good, good casting. He was great in um, in uh, Into the Spider Verse. Did you see that? Yes. Yeah, even as, as a little cameo as Spider Ham was great. Uh, oh, that was that. Now that is such a great film. Spider, oh, um, what a what a movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you see that thing? There was that clip of how they animated um, during that scene when they're swinging the sort of older, fatter Spider Man who'd started mm-hmm. before, and um, the younger Spider Man who's trying right. to learn um, something. Morales, I've forgotten his first Miles name. Morales. Miles Morales. Yes. That's it. And um, they animated them in different frames per second. No. So, the, the older Spider-Man is on 32 frames per second and so his is really seamless whereas Miles Morales is 16 frames per second because they want to show that he's disjointed and he's trying to learn oh, and then, oh, and then as oh, mate, it's so clever and, and it's so hard and as the film goes on he becomes so by the scene where he's fighting Kingpin he's 32 frames per second his moves are really smooth and seamless wow so good anyway back to shitting on this film <laughs> Toy Story 4 <laughs> So Toy Story so, 4, you so, think it's just good. So I think it's just good. And I think it, it's a totally, it's a strange, right? It's just, it, it felt like they'd gone, as I said, I imagine there's been a lot of money. I was posited some people going, mm-hmm. if you can come up with another one that's, that we can sell as like, look to the fans, this is genuinely an interesting story, which it is. Yeah. Then let's make it mm-hmm. and we'll get the actors on board. Um, and I hate that this magical world that I'd lived in has now sort of suddenly been tainted with this commercial aspect. Mm-hmm. Because for me, the toys come to life. That's so cool when you're a kid, right? Right. That's crazy that you just have these. I remember I, when I used to get, I used to like sleep with, uh, when I was a kid, like a little Pikachu doll. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and I had like, stuff like that. Yeah, like Buzz and, and, and Woody were like on the shelf. And I was like, if anyone comes in, like these these toys will come into life and fuck them up. You know? Right. <laughs> and you pick some good ones. You pick Woody and Buzz, obviously they know what they're doing. Yeah. And then Pikachu, Pikachu hopefully he's got oh, lightning man. attacks. Perfect. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. <laughs> um, so that has all been tainted for me to this like, oh no, it's still, it's still just films. It's still just Hollywood. It's still, it's still just commercial. That's, oh, I forgot. Oh yeah, of course these guys, so they want to make good films. But I mean, if, it, if, the, if the price comes right, because I would have loved it if they would have just gone, no, sorry, man, that's we're done with Toy Story and that's it and that's wonderful. Right. We'll make Inside Out too, sure. Like, why not? Pixar have been doing loads of sequels. Um, and I think there's, there's a wider narrative around this as well about how Pixar have gone from making these incredible sort of one-off, mm-hmm. fascinating, really mature, sincere, but kids as well for, for kids' movies to sort of like becoming more franchisey. Right. I mean, no one wanted a Cars 3. Right, of course, no. Nobody even wanted a Cars 2. No one wanted a Cars 2. And Cars was fine. It was decent. It, it's, it's my greatest hope that somehow Pixar does not turn into DreamWorks. That's the biggest. Yeah. That's the biggest problem yeah. with DreamWorks is the DreamWorks movies always feel that's so franchisey. You get there right off the bat. Yeah. It's like immediately. All right, all right, Shrek. Cool. Now we're gonna do Shrek too. Yeah. Let's do Shrek. Let's do four Shreks. Let's do. Yeah, no, hundred percent. Let's works. do five Ice then, Ages. Yeah. 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 Let's do the Shrek experience. Um, I haven't seen all the. Ha- I saw the first House to Train My Dragon, but I haven't seen the other two. But apparently that's quite good. Those films are quite yeah. consistent. I mean, I, I same thing about uh, Kung Fu Panda. I saw the first one. I like the first one, but. Where what I think three and a yeah. television series now. Yeah, I don't yeah. want to. Watch, I don't need to watch any of that uh, extra uh, stuff. Uh. You know, it's interesting that you bring up that this feels sort of like an extra appendage because so the director of Toy Story three was very adamant about not wanting to have another film in the franchise. Shulk. He did this interview and he said. This is right after Toy Story 3 came out, Lee Unkrich. It was really important to me with this film that we not just create another sequel, that it not just be another appendage coming off the other two. 
you know, there may be opportunities for Boyd and Buzz in the future, but we don't have anything planned for anything right now. And so he's trying to come up with a movie for Toy Story 3 specifically that plays in a way that it that it seems like it can complete the thing. And it yeah. does. It completes the trilogy think, Yeah, 100%. And it, so then... It shows the cycle of how, you know, toys getting played with and it's not just a case of you grow up and you lose your imagination. It's yeah. like you grow up and you, and, you, and you give this to a new generation. And, oh, just so wonderful, man. Toy Story... Oh, my God. God. But then John Lasseter comes in in, two, in 2014, four years later. Yep. And, and they're having an investor's, investor's call and he says, hey, you know what? I'm bringing it back. I directed the first two. I want to come in and direct another one. Yep. It's going to be It's going to be beautiful. And then... Well, doesn't that tell you everything? I mean, right. Four years later, the investors... <laughs> these are all... He says it's the... Terms pa- that worry me. It's the passion for the project. Yeah, I'm sure it is, mate. I'm right. sure it is. Passion. Very heavy in the wallet there. Lot of, I've got a lot of passion in my bank account now. Right. It's very... It's with a lot of zeros know, behind that passion. I, I understand. I understand it's a business. Mm-hmm. I understand it's a business. It's just like, for me, it's so sad when... Like, to make a, to make a genuinely great film... Is so tough mm-hmm. right? on a on a wide scale. I mean, I think it's easy to make an independent film. There's not as much at stake, right? Um, in terms of financial, to make a great popular film is fantastic. Mm-hmm. Then to follow that up with another great popular film is super hard. Mm-hmm. It's even harder. Then to follow that those two films up with another great popular film right. I think is incredible. And then for me, I was just like. They surely wouldn't even try. Come on, like don't please. Like they wouldn't try to repeat the feat. Uh, and luckily they didn't, and they just put out something that was that was fine. It was good. So what did you think of Toy Story so 4? So I, I really, really liked Toy Story 4. I think, for me, it's a five-star movie. Wow, but, okay. But here's the thing. Talking to you, I can see some of your... I, I, I completely understand... And not, and not only just like understand, but I am starting to be a little bit more converted to your point of view because now I'm thinking back about my experience in the movie and watching some stuff. So in in, in the States, there's obviously uh, Disneyland and Disney World now have Pixar themed lands. Okay. And it's all the the theming there, specifically for the Toy Story stuff, is all carnival themed. Yeah. Toy Story 4 heavily takes place at a carnival. Oh, yeah. Yep. Oh man. Do Look you think they thought about out. that? Yeah, oh what do you know? Fortunate. That's interesting. Huh. And there's parts of the movie that I think are very, very, very good. Mm. I really mm. like all of the stuff, the the way Woody's character evolves over the mm. course of the movie to having to we've gone from Woody having to accept like physical death to now he's sort of having to accept uh a different like he's he's the elder statesman now, he's his his station in life has changed. And now he can he he isn't needed anymore. So it's a different kind. It's a different kind of a death. That's like you're still around, you're still there, but you don't want to be there. That's a very interesting way to develop a character. But the problem is, Woody is basically the only person or the only character person, toy, whatever. He's the only <laughs> one who goes through any kind of intense development mm. like that. You relegate Buzz to being just a guy who is somehow back to being as dumb as he was yeah, in the first movie. Yeah, that's another thing. I think that was it. Was like, well, we can't have it without Buzz, so let's have him part of it. And like, he's it almost was. It feels almost like what they did with Joey and Friends. I mean, Friends is great because they generally kept the characters the same, but you could tell as they were like, we need more jokes in here. Let's just make Joey dumber and dumber. Like we need someone right. to, like sort of this Steve Carell and Anchorman. It's like, if there's a pause, let's get Joey to do something dumb. Yeah. And that'll be like a nice. Cause everybody's going to get a laugh out of that. Exactly. Yeah. And that was with Buzz, like, cause he started doing that Spanish buzz in Toy Story 3. Right. Which was hilarious, man. It was so funny. And then it's like, oh, what else can we mess with his suit? And then just like press a button. And, and you're right. He just follows this sort of voice in his head. And it's like, no, this is now becoming ludicrous. Like he's, now becoming yeah. an idiot. Yeah. Well, it, it, I would have just on that point of Woody, right? Yes. Like Star Wars, they're doing a Star Wars story to get to to squeeze more films out of this, but they're doing yep. other, other things. If this was called like a Toy Story story, <laughs> <laughs> Woody's adventure in whatever, like if it was like a spin-off uh-huh. film about Woody, <clears throat> then I would accept it a lot more. Toy Story presents Hobbs and Shaw. Yeah. That's <laughs> now that I would watch. 
Dwayne, Dwayne, the Rob Johnson, and Jason Statham, and you know, just what? beating up children. I think in the they room. could have fit in well in this movie. I mean, there's a lot of fairly action-packed yeah. sequences going there's on. There's a stunt in driver in it. Yeah. There's a legit stunt yes. driver. Oh, and Keanu Reeves is the so stunt driver. Yeah, he's, he's great. Yeah. Fantastic. But I did, th- I did think genuinely. I thought <clears throat> he would be more funny. I didn't laugh too much in this one. Uh, yeah, in Toy Story three, two, and one, there were points where I was genuinely giggling. Mm-hmm. I think this one was not as funny for me because as I said just generally throughout the film I thought the tone was a bit odd it was quite sinister and horrific at, at points with those dolls yeah with the creepy dolls yeah which which was good but then it would have that and then it would have a sort of semi comic relief with Buzz but it didn't feel like he was part of that plot really and right. and I didn't, I wasn't really <clears throat> sure what they were going for so I found the whole thing sort of interesting I was glad it wasn't rubbish I don't think it's a bad film mm-hmm. if you, hold it on its own I think it's a good film don't think it's a five star film my, my it's opinion, okay hey it's a good film I have I have uh, what, what do you qualify as a five star film in your mind like what are some of your from this year in particular what are some of your favorite films that you've seen oh this year oh, I don't know if I've seen anything that I would class in that what about okay well then just uh, have just reason general. from like this decade okay I think uh, Birdman uh, Whiplash. Okay. Okay. Um, Great choices. Drive. Well, that was that 2009, 2000. No, 2011. Drive. 2011. Yeah, 2011. Drive. Yeah. Five star. Um, which is a shame because it, it feels like Nicholas Winding Refn is nuts. Yeah. Um, and he can't. And it's just he's he's one of those sort of like Tarantino esque. I think. To make a film, he has to be with people who are going to indulge his every sort of decision. Right. And it worked with Drive. Um, but I haven't seen it, but Only God Forgives got panned. And I haven't right, seen that, and it, same with uh, Neon, Demon. Neon Demon. Which actually, to be fair, Neon Demon, I sort of enjoyed. I mean, it's bonkers. Um, but I, have you seen it? No, not yet. Oh, uh, but, don't watch it with your parents. It's uh, not for family viewing. Um, I mean, I've heard I've heard a lot about it. I've yeah, heard a lot about yeah. people eating, people eating people yep. and eyeballs uh, well, and yep, all sorts yep, of shit. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, but those are films where I feel like there's like a real, real <coughs> incredible level of, of detail and mm-hmm. passion gone into the, into the project. And also everything's strong, like the story, the editing, the acting, right. the, the look and the feel and the sound and everything. And they, I just think these films are, are, are incredibly impactful. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that for me makes a, a five star film. Same with Toy Story 3, like it left me, it resonated with me and I've done repeat viewings and watching yeah. those, I'm excited. I'm putting it on again, I'm excited to watch it again. Whereas Toy Story 4 was like mm, it's good it's a good film well made right it's fine the, the voice acting is great I mean the voice acting was perfectly cast anyway yeah but similarly as what we were saying about Buzz going off in this adventures there's no sort of group aspect there's no communal bit like in Toy Story 3 when they were all together in, in the it, whatever it was the nursery or whatever you called it oh the, um, uh, yeah the, uh, the uh, preschool, yes. preschool yeah. yes 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 um, there was like characters playing off each other whereas this felt like Woody was doing one thing with one person, then run off somewhere else, somewhere else, somewhere else. Right. It's like it was a, almost like a game. Yeah, mm-hmm. or like a like a sitcom where everybody sort of gets split up and they're all doing different things. Yeah. yeah. I would rather now that you, I mean, now that you bring it up, I really would have rathered it been. It feels. It does feel like two. Set, well, it feels like one movie, and then they're like, "Oh wait, we have to put all of the other characters that people actually care about in this. Yeah. Let's figure out how to tack on this yeah. subplot." Yeah. But the movie's Woody's movie. That's yeah. the thing. Yep. I think if. If you can, if there's a way to like, and I know there's people out there who will do this. If someone can go out and edit the movie so that way you get rid of as much of the extraneous stuff as possible and you focus just on Woody's story, then that is, oh, you can't, that's a really tough movie to top because it really, it's, it's the spinoff. It's, but that's what it but is. That's, that's what, what, it what I'm so annoyed it's called yes. Toy Story 4. I know. If they'd have called it, uh, a Toy Story production, let's get some more money with an adventure with Woody. Right. I'd be like, great, this is exactly what this is, man. Yes. This is fantastic. You've said it, you've laid it, it all out on the table. I can accept that. Also, I feel like they did, anyway, just from a sort of like more storytelling point of view, I feel like they did the whole like, we're not needed anymore plot thoroughly with Toy Story 3. Right. So, and even with Toy Story 2, and Woody felt he wasn't appreciated, so mm-hmm. he decided to go somewhere where they'd love him. Even with all that, they'd sort of done that plot of Woody feeling like, oh, I'm not not needed. And then I thought it, maybe it would be interesting to see this sort of like sentient toy. I don't know what they're gonna message they're gonna do with that, but that idea that oh, you're no, you're you're, you're trash, trash, or right. because I'm trash. Um, 
being trash and then and then becoming a toy and like sort of learning that process. But that was a B plot again yeah. to sort of Woody's whole like isolation. And then it was sort of like a rescue of the trash. And I didn't, I just didn't get so, uh, so much of it felt like these are all interesting little bits and pieces, but I don't actually get the point you're trying to make. So Woody realizes that he's not needed. Yeah, good. Like, it's like a mid, it's like if, a midlife crisis yeah, kind of movie. I feel like they did that know? in Toy Story 2 when he was there with going like, you yeah. know, Woody doesn't need me. He's got blah, 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 buzz now. And right. Blah, 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 blah. And, and he was going somewhere where they, they loved him. And then he realized that was sinister. So he goes back and yeah. then, Toy Story 3, he thinks he's still wanted, but he's not. And then he goes somewhere where they love him. And then he realizes that's not right. So, so that's it. And then this is fourth one is like, he realizes no, he's not. He's not wanted. So he then right. goes somewhere where they love him, which is just the world. And that's the end of the story this time. Yeah. So I think the thing that, that saves it for me is, uh, and what what for me makes a movie a five-star movie is something where I, it is, a, I, I feel emotionally affected because... I as I get older and watch more and more movies, especially doing this podcast, I find that it's much harder for a movie to move the needle for me as far as yeah. like going from a movie that I watch and I'm like, this is a good movie. Yeah. This is clearly a very good movie. It's, you know, it's well made. The acting is good, but sometimes it just doesn't quite go all the way for, you know, so... <clears throat> Desensitize you, yeah. Desensitize yeah, I'm a little movies. desensitized yeah, yeah, yeah. to movies. Yeah. But the thing with this, it, it's sometimes it's just like one scene. That's all it takes. Okay. And for me, the thing that did that was at the very, very end, when Woody finally decides to just take the leap of faith and go and be a, a like a carny toy. Yeah. And I was like, okay, this is this is out of character for Woody, and I appreciate that he's making that change. Okay. Yeah. Man, how much have we cared about toys over the years? This is this is no, but but it's good, so but deep. I'm so you get with it. you. I'm so with you. I yeah. care about Woody, man. I want Woody to be. I want Woody to be okay. Yeah. I've, Woody's like. I mean, I've, we've known Woody for a, a decades almost. So, yeah, you know. Well, so what? 1995. So you're 24 years. So it's yeah. coming up to it's 20. It's crazy. He's an old toy, man. He's very There's no old. Toys that last that long in the wild. Are you no, me? absolutely. Although not. he does get stitched up, he does get a little bit of stitching up in Toy Story 2. Um, I mean, he loses. He gives up his voice box in this one too. Yes, that's now that was a good scene. That is a good scene. That is because you knew what was going to happen. It was heartbreaking, nonetheless. Mm-hmm. Um, so look, but I don't know these isolated scenes. I mean, but that's the thing. It's good, like, but, yeah, it's whatever. pulling. It's pulling the isolated stuff. The isolated stuff is enough to save it for me. Like, no, it's a good, but it's a I good see, film. I see it's what a you're good saying. Film. Yeah. I, I'm saying it's, I hate it though. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> you hate I hate it, it because of what it represents to right. me about Hollywood and the franchise. That it is a franchise now, and it's not. I thought because also Pixar, yeah, they took so long to make each film. Mm-hmm. It's not like they bang them out two or three. It's like you know with DreamWorks, where it's like right. Shrek was great. Let's make Shrek two. Come on, come on, get it guys, get it going. Man, hang around. And Shrek two was great, and then it was like let's well let's make the third, and that was very average. Um, <laughs> But, but it was like oh, okay this is you've really taken time right and you got some like care this. into it but yes. to me it just it stank of like meetings where it's like is this interesting enough or is this going to pass as like mm-hmm. a Toy Story 4 right and it shouldn't be it should either you make the want to make the film or not right mm-hmm. so you should either as the creators you should either be like this we need to make this film right or you don't make it with stuff like that. rather than being like I feel like it was all Oh, um, will this pass? Will this be good enough for fans not to hate us? And it probably was. Uh, speaking of which, like the Bo Peep character, I thought was quite contrived in this. I thought it was like, you know, because if, for me, Jesse mm-hmm. was that sort of like right. completely autonomous woman, female character who did her own thing, who was uh, interested in. In, in 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 stuff that was t- t- traditionally man like she had her own steed and she rode and right, she fought she right. was great man and it was like and then it felt like they forgot about her so she now stays in a caravan right and they were like we need we need an empowered female character because that's what all films have to have now it's like mm-hmm. you had one mate you were so good because you were ahead of the curve right you're doing that in 2002 when everyone was like let's get the guy cool and then he can have some hot chick that he bangs later like no you had a, who was emotional as well who wasn't like I had to she was like sad about her loss right of they her. had the whole they had the, they had whole, the whole song that song is heartbreaking it's a heartbreak man. it's beautiful and now what they've done with that character they may have sit in a caravan no one wants to sit in a caravan what do you call them trailers no one wants to that's sit in a trailer RV. RV. It's not even 
even it's not even a cool RV. It's a rubbish RV. <laughs> just to say, no one wants to spend their time doing that. I don't want to watch people spend their time doing that. Absolutely no. not. And so they, they're like, oh, we can have Bo Peep as the empowered character. Bo Peep's cool anyway. She's fine, man. She was never like an idiot. Right. She was always smart. Like, why? Oh, let's change her dress to to be like a pantsuit sort of yeah, thing. Yeah, let's give her a jumpsuit. Yeah, let's give and, her something cool. Yeah, she's action. got exactly. And it's like, oh, and it's like, oh, great. Another thing as well um, with toys, like they did with Star Wars. Let's make C3PO's arm red. It means we can sell two toys: original Bo Peep and new Bo Peep. Great. Yeah. Hey, look how that worked out. Lucky again, fortunate. That to me is just like, oh my god, just make, just have Jesse in there again. Like I don't know, or just make Bo Peep still in her dress, but it's super cool. You know, it doesn't need to be like, yeah. See, look, I don't look like a woman anymore. <laughs> what? Lots. Like, I don't look like a traditional uh, female Bo Peep. Like, you can look like that and act however you want. It, it, uh, it just feel. I mean, contrived for me. You contrived. can see. You can see the puppet strings. You can see the strings <laughs> of Disney, and that's the real. I mean, at the end of the day, that's the real downside. Is I remember. I think it was last week they announced that Disney, now that they have this new streaming service coming yeah. out and they've bought Fox, they're going to start doing remakes of old properties like Home Alone. Oh, right. Okay. For this, like, do Home Alone as a TV show. Right. Which just, like, I saw that news and I was like, you got to be kidding me. You, like, we... I, we already live in this new age of Hollywood where the only thing that really has any clout is remakes and rehashes, and you're gonna and and it makes a lot of money, mm. and mm. they of course because money is key and not necessarily the actual artistic uh, integrity or the artistic value of a property anymore. They want just something that they can churn out, and they know people are gonna watch it yeah. for the sense of uh, for the sake of nostalgia or for the sake of whatever they feel like they can attach themselves to. You know, of course, I remember when Toy Story Four news came out. I was like, I don't know if I'm gonna see Toy Story Four. I didn't even. I don't want to see Monsters University. I heard mm-hmm. that. I heard they're. They heard, I heard they're going down the DreamWorks route already as it is, and the sequels are not as quality as they used to be. Mm. And then I saw the trailer, and people were talking about like, oh, it's an existential crisis. And I was like, okay, this sounds interesting. I'll go see it. Reviews are good. I was like, yeah. Perfect, fun, but now that I mean, you pulled, you really pulled the curtain behind the wizard. We see oh, the man behind no. the curtain now. <laughs> no, it's okay. I don't it's, wanna, if you want to enjoy, the, if you listen to this, you enjoy Story Story Four. Don't listen to my old haggard opinion. <laughs> you can go enjoy that film. I still think it's a good, and that's the thing. I still, for me, I do still think it is a five star film. Yeah. But I can see, I can see some of the artifice that led into it. Yeah. I'm glad that they have and that. It's, it says a lot about Pixar that they are able to still take a movie that's clearly like a money grab and still make it a very yeah. good movie. I think they did put so, so uh, yeah I, I think they did put a lot of work into it, which I expect mm-hmm. less from Pixar working on a Toy Story film. But I feel like the work this time was misplaced. It was it was less like what's the story we want to tell and how are we going to tell it, and it's more like will this story appease fans enough, right? Or will it be unique enough? Let's make sure that's the case. And they did that successfully. Same with, um, and I relate it so much because it's sort of similar franchise, similar or overarching umbrella company, similar with The Force Awakens. That was clearly like a committee driven story. Mm-hmm. It was like they had the prequels, no one liked them. They were trying to do different stories. Let's let's do Star Wars four again, okay, and change some elements. I think The Force Awakens is a great film, but I think that was there as a palette cleanser. Mm-hmm. And my, my friend pointed this out to me and he said it and he called it before he even came out. He was like, they're going to do something that's going to have all the fanboys be like, this is Star Wars. And then they're going to start making their, their right. things again, which they did. I think The Force Awakens is good. But similarly with Toy Story 4, it felt like the committee being like, is this like, will we get away with this? Like, well, right. makes, let's make sure we get away with this by doing this and this and we'll make them do that and we'll add this yeah. new character and we'll get these... Um, because there's an element of the Force Awakens where you're watching. I remember watching Force Awakens in the theater and just being like, "Yeah, this feels like this feels like a Star it Wars does, movie." I, I went and I'm watched it at midnight. midnight. I went and watched it at midnight when it came out. Uh, so much fun, loved it. A uh, couple of people in fancy dress. I mean, we're British, so you're American, maybe. I think fancy dress and sort of that whole, uh, you know, showing up. Oh it's yeah, you more show big up. in America. In, 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 in it's a, 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 bit, a bit more uh, sensible and awkward. Um, <laughs> But lo and behold, we had a couple of people dress up. One as an imperial um, guard, and the other one as an Ewok. Mm-hmm. And they came in. Uh, they got a round of applause. Someone from the back just said, just shouted, "What a great way to spend your money!" <laughs> and then everyone was like, "Let's get into this film." It was so <laughs> good. everyone was on board with what we were doing, and that was great. And it felt like to me, Toy Story Four echoed the sort of um, the production process of that. It was like 
are we going to get away with this? What can we do to get people on board? Right. They started on the back foot and they were like, what can we do to get people on board? Rather than being like, you should either want to make the film or not. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because Star Wars, Force Awakens was like, let's kick a franchise. So we need to get people on board and then we can make films we want to make. Right. And you know what? And this is, and this is some news that I think is probably heartening to both of us who, who have some, some old person cynicism inside of us already, even at young ages. In May 2019, producer Mark Nielsen confirmed that Pixar will stop making sequels after Toy Story 4. Wow. In favor of focusing on original films at this time. On an episode of the Ellen DeGeneres show, Tom Hanks claimed that the film would be the final film in the series. Uh, and uh, have, well, well uh, I spoke too soon. I didn't read far <laughs> enough down this Wikipedia page. <laughs> However, Nielsen did not rule out the possibility of a fifth film, stating every film we make, we treat it like it's the first and last yeah. film we're ever going to make. Great. So uh, you force yourself to make it hold up. And then they are going to do spinoffs on Disney Plus with uh, Forky and Bo Peep. So right. it's, we're going to get those that, little that, Toy that, Story that adventures. That Bo Peep thing annoys me so much because they're doing spinoff because it's like we want to do a, a, a spinoff about a, a strong female right. toy. Yes. And it's like, let's make one. Or let's remake one. We already, like, had, you already one, had one, man. Jesse. You just thrown her to the side. She was so cool. Toy Story Two. She's riding on the, on the or, yeah on Don. Is his name Donkey? Is he just no? Cool? That's that. Now we're getting into DreamWorks territory. What's his name? Uh, I feel like it's Slash Rusty or, Rusty or something like that. Hold on. Let's just look up Toy Story Two while we're at it. Um, Hello. But yeah, she's like riding, and that's so cool, man. And they've just gone. Nah, she can sort of hang out at the back. Where's the guys? Bullseye. Bullseye. That's a good horse oh, name. Bullseye. Yeah, that is great. Especially in Tom Hanks's yeah. Southern Draw. Oh. Bullseye. Bullseye. Come on, Bullseye. Oh man. Well, hey, listen. I am very glad. This is a this is a wonderful discussion of Toy oh. Story Four and corporatism and how much it hurts. Sorry, I feel filmmaking. Like, I feel like I'm about to say like <laughs> anyway, subscribe to my new cult. Like this by fight the power, I'll beat the man. But I mean this is but this is the time to plug things. This so is, yeah. if you want to get some uh if, if you people want to follow you. Yeah, yeah. If you want to follow me, to I'm at hate Toy Story Four. No. <laughs> I'm I'm, I'm at I'm at down with Disney corporate. <laughs> I mean, I still go see this film, man. I love them. Uh, but, but yeah, I'm sucked in. At Ali Woods Gigs, A L I W O D S G I G S on anything. So check me out on there. I've got comedy um, uh, gigging all around the UK. Hopefully, I can make it to America pretty soon. I would uh, love we'll it to see, see you out there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, if you want to follow me, and if you want to debate with me, then bring it, man. Let's have it. Let's have it out. Um, Good. Yeah, 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 yeah. I like that lively discussion <laughs> because I always like hearing other people's opinions. That's why, <laughs> especially on the internet. <laughs> especially on the internet. Oh boy, they, <laughs> they're the most considered polite opinions. Of I course, yeah, yeah, yeah. So researched yeah. and fun. <laughs> uh, you can find me at Diet J on Twitter and Instagram. JLightComedy.com for show dates. Uh, if you are in LA and you looking for something to do at the end of the month I got something you should do my album recording come yeah. to that August 31st at the Pack Theater details are in the show notes click the link all that fun stuff and uh, if you like the show subscribe tell a friend and all that fun stuff too look at that awesome man this has been Blockbusting. This has been Allie Woods. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thank you for having me, Jay. What, what a wonderful you podcast doing. you got here. What a wonderful, what a wonderful, wonderful guest you are oh, for a podcast. Stop <laughs> <hates>. <laughs> this has been Blockbusting. Go see something good for a change. Okay.